And welcome back, Ray. When the deadly shootings of the police officers in Dallas, as well as the shootings in Minnesota and Baton Rouge, they've been dominating the headlines as well as social media. If your kids aren't yet aware of what's going on, there's a good chance they soon will be. So how do you have this important conversation with them? Parenting expert Erica Suter and our very own Ryan Smith are back with us. And Erica, I, I want to start with you because so many parents, I'm a parent, but we're hesitant to have these tough talks about horrific events and tragedy, but you actually say we need to have these. It can be a beneficial conversation. Right, as adults, we need to acknowledge that this type of police brutality isn't new, but the widespread use of smartphones is. So kids are being bombarded with images that they never did see in the past. And so it's forcing parents to have these conversations earlier and earlier. I wanna ask you how young is too young, but Ryan, I wanna bring you in. Yeah. You have two twin boys, they're mm -hmm. two and a half you're already having these conversations with them. What are yeah. you saying? I mean, my point is to, to have a conversation with them as soon as they can start speaking. I, I fear for the world that they will inherit. I really do. Two boys, two black boys in this country, in this environment, it's terrifying for me and my wife. So for me, it's important that everything they see, and we keep them away from this right now, but as they start to see things, it's so important for me to not only explain the images they're seeing, but explain what's happening behind them and to encourage them to take action, but nonviolent positive action. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to do because you look at Philando Castillo and mm -hmm. what happened to him, and kids will likely ask, well, what happens to the person who did that? And for a lot of people of color out there, they think not much, and that's a problem for our society right now. Well, when do when do you start, Bro? He's obviously having these conversations with his kids. When do you have these conversations? How do you take the initiative? But also, you know, his boys are young. Yeah. How does the conversation change when you actually have? A teenager. Oh, when you have a teenager, it's a completely different conversation. When you're dealing with little kids, you have to use age appropriate language and try to explain things in a way that they will understand. But when you have a teenager, you have to sit them down and have a frank discussion about what's at risk here. Now, they may be detained or have a traffic stop, but you have to tell them, like, this is the way you need to behave. Comply with what the officer is asking. Don't raise your voice. The object of the situation is to get home alive. And that's so sad. And it's so, it's, it's a horrible thing as a parent to have have to do, but that's what we have to teach our kids because we mm -hmm. do live in a time where a traffic stop could be unsafe. And, and I want to bring up, before we go, amplify what you just said, Ryan, mm -hmm. having these conversations, but also peaceful protests. There's yes. a way to do it. Right. And, and you know, you want to bring something positive about this instead of arranging your children with there are some, hate. Right. There's so many things you can do. Like you say, peaceful protests, contacting your representative. Mm -hmm. But in the situation itself, the scary thing for a lot of people of color is they feel like there are no rules. How do right. you work with a police officer? And I think in many ways, just have to respond, listen, and make sure you're safe. Great insight. Great, great conversation. I want to thank you both for joining us, thank and we'll you. be right back.